spots. You will after watching this week's San Diego Explained. It's me like that. Almost every day, Michael Garcia comes to Balboa Park to play jazz. My love, that's what I love to do. His Bashan Zoe is always by his side. When I come out here, I, I come out feeling great because I always get good compliments from people. It's easy to see why Michael and so many other people love Balboa Park. I had all of these things that were just fascinating to me. Voice of San Diego's Lisa Halverstadt has been researching and answering San Diegans' questions about their beloved park, which includes, of course, the famous San Diego Zoo. So Something that I think is really interesting about the finances of the zoo that people may not realize is that there is a city property tax that the zoo benefits from. Can you explain what that's all about? So back in the 1930s, the zoo was having some struggles, and they decided to put a property tax measure on the ballot, and voters approved it. And, you know, fast forward, obviously, years and years. Now that tax is bringing in about $13 million a year, which is a pretty hefty sum. And obviously, the Balboa Park as a whole has really had a lot of infrastructure challenges. We hear a lot of conversations about, you know, what can be done, some of the infrastructure is crumbling. So more and more people have been talking about, well, could some of this money go to the rest of the park, right? But it turns out that because this was passed as a property tax and it's a city charter item, there would need to be a public vote to change this. And the zoo for now hasn't really expressed a lot of interest in spreading the law. So something that I had no idea until I read some of your reporting was that there are organizations here, some really popular ones, that don't pay any rent at all to be here at this amazing location. Yeah, so almost two dozen uh, institutions here in the park don't pay any rent. Long, so the Museum so of Art, so um, the Automotive Museum, which is in another part of the park here, and then the Model Railroad Museum, which is over there. Balboa Park really made its name for itself with the 1915 and 1935 expositions, and that's when a lot of these beautiful buildings that we see were built. Well, the city decided after those expositions were done that they would lease those buildings out to different institutions that had some kind of cultural, educational, or artistic benefit for residents. And so they agreed to rent those buildings out, um, and you know, with little to no rent in a lot of the cases, um, with the understanding that those institutions would pay for me. There are uh, some really neat um, services available to people that have disabilities so that they can enjoy this beautiful park too. Tell me about that. Well, first off, um, if you need to use a wheelchair, you'd like a scooter to get around, you can head over to the visitor center um, right behind us, and there are scooters and wheelchairs for rent. Um, and the park also has a tram system that goes around to some of the further flung parking lots and actually right to the Plaza de Panama where a lot of us like to hang out. And people in wheelchairs can actually use this service, or if you're in a walker or something, or you might need somebody to help you in, the city actually has those employees that are stationed on the trams there to help you get off. And guess what? There's a tram stop not too far from the main plaza where you'll find Michael and Zoe. It's just a great place. There's no other place like this. I always look forward to every day coming out here to play. It's just, you know, it's my love. <laughs> Lisa says another thing she discovered about the park and all of her research, though it's usually not one of the busy areas. Inspiration point on the southern end of the park has really beautiful towns and walkways. She says it makes a really good date spot.